with the first paper, a review on TSO DSO coordination models and solution techniques are to the floor is yours. And thank you. Just can, introduce can you... yourself and we, we can start. Uh, all right, can you see my screen? Yes, perfect. Okay, so I am Atu. I'm from the University of Melbourne, a PhD student here. Um, so I will present this paper, a review on DSO, DSO coordination models and solution techniques, a collaborative work between Dr. Kriakos Petro and Luis Fernando Schoer. I will start with a brief introduction, and then I'll jump to the identify the TSO, DSO coordination models. Uh, here we call them TSO managed model, TSO, DSO hybrid managed model, and DSO managed model. Then I'll show a mapping of the solution techniques that we found in literature and I present some conclusions. So I will present uh, the challenge of the R services with this small network. Uh, here we have a medium voltage feeder with a four low voltage uh, feeders as well. Uh, there are houses with PV and matrix and we, we are considering here that they can provide service to the system, to the TSO basically. So let's imagine now uh, an abnormal high demand situation. For example, here in Australia, when we are in the summer, there are some days with more than 40 degrees Celsius and then everyone turns on their, their air conditioning units. And the system has to uh, need services. So basically these houses are going to provide service all in the same time. And this will bring distribution network problems as you can see on the illustration. They can be voltage problems or turbo problems depending on where it is in the, the network. So basically we need to manage these DRs to avoid this problem. Bringing this to the context of the TSO DSO coordination, right now what's happening is that DRs are providing services through aggregators to the TSO. However, no one is verifying if the distribution network can really uh, deliver the services. So there is a conflict between the DNO and the TSO. In the near future, we expect that uh, we need a TSO-DSO coordination because of uh, the increased DR services uh, provision. So we started the literature and we saw that uh, many, there are many different ways of doing this coordination. So uh, and also there are different proposed solution techniques. So we wanted to, co we wanted to compare the models and, and the best way of doing this is trying to find a base. Then we came with these uh, three core models I will present today for you. Uh, here is a brief overview. So the DR services provision are going to exacerbate distribution network problems. Uh, so we need to validate these DR services considering distribution network constraints. And also we need improved TSO DSO coordination. There are some advantages on this uh, Coordination, for example, the higher uncertainty of feasible DR services volumes, so the TSO can make an increased reliance on the DR services. Uh, depending on the system, it means that uh, we can lower costs or we can increase the participant of renewables uh, on the matrix. There are some challenges, however, for example, the increased complexity on system operation and dispatch. Uh, lack of, of observability on lower voltage levels is a problem. And also there is a need of changing policies and regulations because they were made for a time that we didn't have these uh, generations in distribution and now we have. So they had to change probably. Uh, here is just an overview on the literature review. We reviewed 39 TSO DSO coordination papers. As I said, there are different models. So we came up with uh, three identified models that we called TSO managed model, TSO DSO hybrid managed model, and the DSO managed model. Uh, on the right, you can see that this paper starts from 2011, go to 2019, and the research in this area is increasing along the years. Here is a bit more of information. Uh, on the left, uh, I show the works by model. The most uh, studied one is the DSO managed model. However, there are a lot of conceptual papers on the hybrid management model as well. And in the right hand side, we show the industry or authors per location. So you can see that there are uh, people from all around the world uh, work on this, uh, mainly Europe, 
uh, North America and in Australia. So starting with the first model, the TSO managed model, uh, the TSO is responsible for the system dispatch, including the ER. So both transmission and distribution networks constraints are considered by the TSO. So this is a huge problem. I will explain the process now, how it would look like. Uh, so first starting the DR submitting the bids to the TSO. Uh, also the DSO sends real time operational data to the TSO. So the TSO has the information to make the bids validation, also the dispatch and send the dispatch command to DRs. There are some advantages on this model. For example, it simplifies the TSO DSO coordination. Uh, the TSO has a know-how on dispatch, so they only have to uh, expand this to the distribution side. And the TSO has no conflict of interest when punishing distribution network assets to the limits. So, so as they don't own the assets in distribution networks, they, they are probably going to push it to the limits. What is what we need or we want to increase the uh, renewables. But there are some challenges, for example, they're likely to have a less efficient facilitation of DR services because the, D, the TSO is deciding uh, how much dispatch we need, but the DSO is controlling voltages and transformers uh, with OLTC taps. So, so it might be conflicting depending on the coordination, how it is done. Uh, there is a huge computation and modeling challenge for the TSO because it is a transmission and distribution networks. So it's really huge. Uh, a high amount of operational data transfer between TSO and DSO, and the TSO lacks know-how on distribution networks. Uh, the second model is the TSO-DSO hybrid managed model. Uh, here, the TSO is, uh, again, responsible for the system dispatch, including the DR, uh, but the DSO now validates the DR's bids, and the DSO can also procure services. Uh, the, the process uh, starts with the bid submissions from the DR to the TSO. Then the, bid, the, the DSO has a bid visibility of the TSO, so they, they can validate these bids and they send back the information, the validated bids to the TSO and maybe to the DR at the same time. And then the TSO can make the dispatch and, and send the dispatch command to the DRs. The defense on that is likely to have a more efficient facilitation of DRs because right now the DSO, who is the one controlling the distribution network, is also validating uh, the bid so they can prepare the network for receiving these services better. The DSO know how on distribution networks uh, will help. Uh, there is a less computational and modeling requirements because now the DSO is only modeling the distribution side, it is a smaller problem. And there is no need of operational data transfer from DSO and TSO, just the validated bids. Uh, there are still some challenges, for example, the potential DSO conflict of interest. Uh, they might not want to push the assets to the limits, but it can be solved with uh, the correct regulation and incentives. Uh, each DSO still has computation and modeling challenges, and there is a more complex TSO-DSO coordination process. The third one is the DSO managed model. Uh, here the TSO is responsible for the system dispatch again, but now the DSO is responsible for the DER dispatch. The DSO validates DER and the DSO can also procure DER services. Uh, this model also facilitates the creation of distribution level markets, but we are not going to present the process for these markets here, just the common one without markets. So it would start with a bid submission from the DR to the DSO. The DSO would, would validate these bids and aggregate them, send these aggregated validated bids to the TSO. The TSO then will do the dispatch considering this aggregated uh, dispatch and send the, the aggregated dispatch to the DSO. The DSO then is the one who decides uh, how to dispatch the DERs. So they can uh, do amends if needed. That's why we say that this model is the one most likely to have the uh, most efficient facilitation of DR services. Uh, the DSO know-how on distribution networks is another advantage. Uh, there is a less computation and modeling requirements if compared to the TSO managed model and no need of operational data transfer from DSO to TSO and less data exchange between TSO and DSO or the DR. Uh, there are some challenges as well. Uh, again, the potential DSO conflict of interest. Uh, 
uh, each DSO we still has computational and modeling challenges, and it will be for the complexity if the distribution level markets uh, are used. Uh, also, if the distribution level markets are considered, the DSO lacks know-how on these markets, so they have to develop this know-how. Uh, so once the coordination model is adopted, uh, what is the most suitable solution technique? It could be multiple powerful or optimal power flow or other methods. We are here not answering this question, but we are making a mapping. So first, the transmission networks, uh, the mostly used one is the DCOPF. Uh, and then when you go to the distribution networks, the medium voltage networks were considered and the most used one uh, was the single phase ACOPF. So we can say that the single phase ACOPF was the main solution technique used so far. And, and we identify the three gaps. For example, uh, there is no exploration of, of the three phase ACOPF on the, this context. Also the medium voltage, low voltage distribution networks uh, were not considered as a single problem. And, and there's a lack of large scale networks uh, simulations so far. I would like to present some conclusions. Uh, the DR service provision are going to exacerbate distribution network problems, and we are going to need the TSO DSO coordination uh, soon. And here we identified the three core models, and we named the TSO managed model, the TSO DSO hybrid managed model, and the DSO managed model. Uh, the main user solution technique is the single phase ACOPF for distribution medium voltage. And there are, uh, the main gap is the three phase ACOPF for multiple voltage levels. Uh, for example, the medium voltage connected to low voltage distribution networks. I would like to thank the presence of everyone, acknowledge my sponsors, the University of Melbourne and CAPES Brazil, and also uh, give my thanks to Professor Luis Fernando Show and Dr. Kiriakos Petrus for the collaboration in this work. If you have any questions, I'm, I'm available. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Arthur. We have time for some questions. For sure, I have one. And basically, I appreciate the idea to use three type of models that is already running in, uh, I know a lot of investigation about them in Europe and in Italy, this different scheme of market modeling. One issue is uh, you are speaking about services that come from there to respect to TSO, which focus you were focused on, which were the service that you have in mind, because it depends on the on the service that you want to apply can fit differently. That's my idea. Okay, yeah, I agree, right? Uh, so depending on the services, uh, things will change, but the core models are still applicable. But it, it, depending on the service, you have to model in a different way the problem, right? The solution technique has to be adapted to this. So basically, that's how I think. But these three mods are still, will still be there in a general way. That, that's why they are core. They can be modified or adapted, but they are still going to be there. That's my vision and our vision. Okay. Uh, uh, we have four questions, question and answer. I think we can go through one by one. I think it would be the most effective. One is about what is the level of coordination that is exactly running in Australia or in this, under discussion. Okay, so about this one, Australia is discussing different models. Uh, currently they are considering four models and they fit on this tree, uh, but they didn't decide yet which one is the best one. But recently they released a report saying that uh, the most costly effective would be a hybrid module so far. So they are still developing and doing research in this area to find out which one is the best one. And also they highlighted that the insertion of DERs has to be high to really bring benefits to the system. Okay. Um... I'm not following the right, but I just following some logic. 
Professor Van Cotten is pointing out about the confidentiality that we can happen between TSO and DSO, how they can be effective in the system. Or on the model between that the TSO and the DSO? Yes. The last answer, maybe you can have a look. Yeah, I'll try to find this one. I saw it the last one. Ah, uh, okay. How will it impact the present approach? Okay. Um, so, for example, in, in the TSO model, as we are sending the real time operational data, this would be an issue, right? Because of privacy. They might not want to do that. But then we go to the hybrid system or the DSO, which is separated, then we you can. Uh, separate the data. So there is no privacy problem in these models. So I think the answer for this is, it, it will depend on who is deciding which is the best system or not. Uh, it will depend on, on, on basically discuss with the industry and see what's the best solution. If the price is really that important, so we need to really split the two systems like in the last model, the DSO managed model, for example. Uh, uh, I think we can mix together two questions about the use of free phase OPC, OPF among a medium voltage and low voltage and a mixture of them. Uh, do you which have any comment that? on it? Uh, all right, this third one, right? How do you consider the difference three phases to OPF? Okay, well, when we talk about the three-phase AC OPF uh, on the medium voltage and low voltage, we are talking that we need to join them together, right? They, they, are, they should not be separated, not doing in a separated way. Um, and how do you think you can combine the COPF and ACOPF? Maybe through distribution optimization, you can split the problems in two. Uh, independent ones, and then you can use different models as well. So you okay, can separate yeah. the COPF and ACOPF. Okay, thank you, Arthur, for the nice presentation. I think no worries. We can move if we don't have more open question. We are making some exercise on, on this. New question and yeah. answer. So I hope everyone are fine with the comments. So thank you again, Artu. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Frederick.